digitalization really offers many possibilities and it is more important than ever before. But when it comes to how to actually um, link the digital world with the real world, many Siemens customers you know, ask themselves, hmm, where do I, how do I actually start? What can I do with it? How do I do it? Um, what do I want to do? Um, who can advise me and uh, accompany me through the digital transformation? How do I actually implement it in concrete terms? And how can I optimize my production? Many questions, and I'm pretty sure our next experts have the answers. Please welcome the CEO of Digital Industries Customer Services, Karen Florschitz. Great to have you with us. And also here joining us is the Digital Industries Customer Services Lead Engineer, Dr. Daniel Klein. Now, these were many questions here right from the start. My first question to you, how are you doing today? Very well, how are very you? Very well. <laughs> very good. You're looking very, very good, very fresh, yes. both of you. Um, now, once again, all these, you know, hows, what's, when's, where's, um, do you have an answer to these questions? Well, actually, Chris, I have to disappoint you. Not that I not have the question. Uh -huh. There is not a single answer to this question. Mm -hmm. It's not a one-size-fits-all answer. Okay. So you have to look at it from an individual point of view. Well, that's why you guys stay tuned. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Well, digital transformation, what's next? That is actually what's driving us as digital enterprise services, really looking at what is there for our customers. And Chris mentioned some of these questions. Where do I start? How do I start? Who can accompany me throughout the process? And actually, what do I want to digitalize? This is why we are looking at it from a holistic point of view. What do I mean with that? Very simple. Our customers start at a different point. They have different needs. And uh, we look at that in order to define also what's the starting point, what's the business model behind, how can we help them. And also it drives us in really going forward, doing maybe some new models, come up with that. And honestly, digitalization or digital transformation, it's a process. There's always a next. And that is why the right partner and the right digitalization approach crucially important. We have experts that are looking, can look at different industries, that are looking mm. at, are you a greenfield? Are you a greenfield setup or brownfield? Are you operating in the process industry or in the discrete industry? Are you a medium, a large or a small company? And is it something you want to just digitalize, like a machine or a process? Is it your whole factory? What is it really that drives you? Most of our customers ask, they want to have flexibility, they want to have quality, and they are looking at really efficiency to get that out of the process of digitalization. And for all that, we developed a holistic approach. What do I mean with that? The holistic approach consists of three easy steps. Consulting, implementation and optimization. Consulting. What is all that? Actually, consulting is sitting down, finding out what is it that someone wants to do in their factory or in their plant. And you remember in, in former um, or times before COVID, we all were traveling, we were all sitting in planes. Mostly the stewardess, and you remember that, said, um, and remember, the closest exit might be behind you. We find that also with, with consulting. Sometimes the customer has something he's envisioning, but in reality, when you ask him, it's something that is lying underneath him that he didn't see. So it was actually just like the exit behind him. But when you ask a lot of why questions, you get that out. So within consulting, we're looking at what kind of digital transformation do they want to do, you want to do, where do you want to end up, and what is really driving you. In the second part, that's implementation. That's all about putting that strategy, that what you define together, into coming to life. So putting it into your factory. 
also taking a digital twin in that. Digital twin for a machine, for a line, for a full plant, for maybe just one product. Or even taking the supply chain. So what's coming into your factory, what's done in your factory, and what's going out of it. Taking that into consideration. Think about a milk production. In a milk production, when you have all your, your cartons going through the filling, you, don't, you might want to increase the output, but you don't want the cotton to go faster so that it, it doesn't, yeah, it, it's not there when it's actually going to be filled. So it's maybe a second too late or a second before. So the milk is pouring on the ground. You don't want that. With a digital twin, you can actually simulate that. Say, what's the right time? What's the, 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 the optimum for the flow in your factory? So that's the second step, implementation. Looking at the third step that I mentioned, optimization. This is really taking also the data into consideration. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, so that maybe the machine is already saying, hey, I need some service going forward. Also looking at productivity. How can you really increase the productivity in the process that you have defined? So taking the good parts from the first two steps and putting that after some time really in looking what else can we do. And with that, we have a holistic approach. We have a circle that you go through and it's one approach. And we noticed that this is really beneficial for our customers and with our customers. And we've done that already several times now. We're through the cycle with customers. And I'm happy to have Daniel here with me on my side because he went through that circle together with Airborne, one of our customers. So Daniel, why don't you explain to us what did you do with Airborne? I'd love to. Well, in my role as a lead engineer, I had the opportunity to work in a project together with Airborne, one of our long-term customers. Airborne is a company located in The Hague in the Netherlands, and they're working in the composite business. They produce lightweight parts for the aerospace or the marine sector. For example, lightweight solar panels for satellites. And like many companies in the composite business, they still have lots of manual work. However, manual work is also very expensive. And this is why they came up with an exciting new idea for a highly automated production line. And before this event, we asked Arno van Marik, the CEO of Airborne, what the challenges in his business are and how digitalization can help him. It's a very good question, but first we need to realize that actually digitization in our industry is still in its infancy. The processes that we use are fairly manual. When you look in the clean rooms where we make composite products, it's almost like black magic. It's, and the reason is that people are actually quite good machines. So if you want to automate this, then you have to really change your way of thinking. When we produce parts in our clean rooms, it is layer by layer and it has to be very precise. Uh, when you put parts into an aircraft or into space or into Formula One, what a lot of people know, it, it, is required to be top performance and that means that when people put down all these materials they can judge layer by layer if it is pitch perfect it's very difficult to translate that into a static form of automation and that's why we are still at the beginning you have to take almost the entire leap in one go you have to translate your your knowledge your your process knowledge your material knowledge into machine learning. The machines need to be able to understand what they do to the material. It's very vulnerable. They need to understand what it does when they put the material down and how that works into the end product. And that means that we have to develop automation and digitization at the same time. Automation alone doesn't do it. Wow, what a statement. Automation alone didn't do it. Daniel, what magic did you do with that customer? Well, the first thing that we did was listen to the customer. What are his goals? What are his challenges? What does he want to achieve? And in one of those first workshops, they were explaining the concept of their line. 
And the whole concept, it starts with the two feeders to cut the different price for the product. We have an intelligent tray system to pick up all the layers needed for the product. Then we have a robot that places the loose layer stacks in front of the press. We have a multi-step press process and we have a final robot to pick up the parts, place them on the conveyor line that goes directly into the quality station. And they said that they have three different goals for that line. The first goal is to increase the output because they want to hit the mass market with their new production line. The second goal was to manage the flexibility because for composite parts, it's not just the outer shape that changes, it is also the inner structure that can change. And the third thing was to have high quality parts, to have the maximum quality in production. And together with the customer's process experience and his business know-how, and with our digitalization knowledge, we developed a vision together. And this vision, we broke down into single projects, we evaluated the projects, we ordered the projects, and we created a roadmap together. So that was the first step, the consulting. How did you do in the implementation? Are you already there? And what did you put into life with Airborne? Mm -hmm. What was very important about um, the implementation was the fact that the implementation team was already involved in the consulting. So they could take over without any delay. And according to the goals that we had at Airborne, we did two different projects. The first project was about increasing the output. And to make this happen, we developed a digital twin of production. And with the help of that digital twin of production, we did thousands of different simulations with different combinations. And we quickly realized that there is a bottleneck in front of the press. It was a robot which was too slow. So we had to dig a little deeper make a, a very detailed simulation of that specific robot, including the PLC code, including the kinematics. And with the help of that simulation, we could reduce the handling time of that specific robot from 65 seconds to 55 seconds, which means only within a few weeks, we had a potential output increase of 18%. The second project, it was about managing the flexibility. As I just said, it's not just the outer shape that changes for composite parts, it is also the inner layer structure that changes. And usually product simulation is a very powerful tool to support a designer in finding the best design. From an economical perspective, however, you also want a part that is highly efficient in production. And to combine design and production, that's a big challenge. So we had to do something completely new, something that we have never done before. And it was to connect the digital twin of the product with the digital twin of production. And all together, we combined it with an AI. So the AI would learn step by step what is the best compromise between the design and production. Wow. So that was the implementation step. Did you already get along to do the optimization step? So the last step of our circle? Mm -hmm. Well, we haven't reached this final optimization step yet, but the project is still ongoing. And of course, already during the consulting phase, we were thinking about the optimization. And we came up with some very exciting projects. And one of those projects, it's called virtual sensing. So what we'd like to do is, we would like to build a very detailed process simulation model of what's happening within the press. So we can increase the process stability and we can also increase the process quality. And the next step, we'd like to take a part of that simulation and run it in parallel to the real production. And with that simulation model running in parallel to the production, we can do things that we could never do in reality. For example, measure the temperature in the middle of the part while it's being pressed. And with that extra data set, with that virtual data set, we can extend the real data set. And this gives us the opportunity for really nice data analytics and AI solutions. But of course, as I just said, the project, it is ongoing and we still have an exciting future ahead of us. And of course, the whole project, it was really Huge fun for the whole Siemens team 
and the collaboration with Erwin was great. And we also asked Arno von Maurik what he thinks about the project and the collaboration with Siemens. Siemens has been instrumental in our journey. We have turned our company from a design and engineering firm for composite parts into an automation company. And by teaming with Siemens, we had a very good foundation in controllers, in hardware and software. So that basis was taken care of. Our customers don't challenge that at all when they see we've got Siemens as the, the foundation into our solutions. So we could focus on what's really important to us, which is translating composite knowledge into machines and processes in such a way that we can actually create a much cheaper but much better parts for lightweighting, uh, like say transportation or, um, or aircraft. That's one. But the other one to me is more appealing even because what we also did with Siemens is create a full digital twin of an end-to-end -end production line, no touch labor of laminates. And what that can do is we can simulate designs of laminates of composite parts. We can simulate the processes that are actually the actual processes in the production line and we can also simulate the result and by doing that we can make optimizations and finally decide what is the best value for money uh, and that's quite significant we can reduce cost at a very high performance with 70 to 80 percent and this way we enable the uh, adoption of these technologies in markets that were not uh, that we were not able to address before. So we think it's instrumental. Wow. 70 to 80% cost reduction in the composite industry? That's significant, absolutely. So Daniel, have we proven that also in other industries? Because I'm sure people out there are wondering, are we able to do that also in other parts of the industry? Yeah, sure. Well. In the composite industry, we still have lots of manual work. And in that specific industry, we have cost savings of 70, sometimes even 80%. However, we also see huge savings in other highly automated industries or highly automated productions. Sometimes savings of even more than 20%. Because the thing is that with our digital twin technologies, we can give you a completely new insight in on, on what's going on within your production, what is happening. And with the help of that technology, we can uncover, for example, trapped value or costs within your production. That's great. And now you probably wonder, the session was all about service. So did you expect that of service? That we come up with a holistic approach, we can do some cost savings, we're looking at efficiency, quality, and flexibility for our customers. Or did you think about, oh, service is all about maintenance, about the guys coming in the blue overalls and uh, are coming with the spare parts. Service is really more than you think. And I hope we could prove to you that this in the digital world is way more. Our approach is unique and we've proven with several um, companies out there that it's really working and we can support on the digital transformation. So Chris. Yes. You want to join us? I'll join you. I, I think you guys are a great team, first of all. And uh, second, um, you know, I'm surprised to see, you know, that the scope of responsibilities that belong to customer service. So thank you very much uh, for this for this fantastic presentation. How about uh, some questions? Do we have, we still have a bit of time, don't we? Um, actually, Yes, we do have time. That's cool, because we have plenty of questions and I'm going to start with um, the one which is really good because um, the customer is asking what happens to customers who have not implemented Siemens products only? Oh, that is not an issue. As I mentioned before, we're looking out for greenfield, but also for brownfield. So if a customer doesn't have, you know, all of our products, not an issue. We need to get the data out of there and our people are able to do that because that's the foundation. So getting the connectivity is not a topic for us to really do that um, and doing some cool things afterwards with the data 
that's what we want to do. Perfect. And another one, I think um, you really made it by saying 78% cost savings, 80% production increase. What are the biggest challenges then when implementing a digital strategy so you can achieve all this? I think that comes back to the, the, my first answer when Chris said, so where are the answers? Actually, there's not a one-size-fits-all strategy. So you really have to sit down with the customer and find out what is driving, what is really the starting point, what do you want to do, what do you want to digitalize? And I think we've shown we go through the cycle together with you. We have the experts in different industries and different parts along the way. So we are there, we are happy to support, but if you haven't got a strategy yet or you're thinking about what to do, it's easy, we can sit down, we can decide what is the best starting point and what to do and what not to do. There are also things you might not do because it's not efficient. So the starting point is really the sitting down, the discussion, and the finding out what is it you really want to digitalize. And I think we've proven that now with Airborne, and there are several other customers out there where we are active in working with them. Perfect. And um, that brings me to the point that there are a lot of questions, but we only have a bit of time <laughs> left. So I will promote the expert dialogue session mm -hmm. where we can meet Daniel and um, Henning Oxenfeld and Oliver Turk answering all these questions directly when you, dear um, viewers, are talking to our experts in the expert dialogue session. You write your questions in the chat box and they will be answered in the sessions immediately. Um, that will be five past five. So in a few minutes, in 10 minutes from now, you will have the chance to chat with Daniel and the colleagues um, to get really detailed information on how to help you and kind of get not only service, but even more. All right, thank there, you. There we go. Thank you very much, Karen. Thank and you. thank you also, Daniel. You too. Thank you very much. So.